Hi guys, welcome to another video. As you can see, back at our testing station, today I've set the jigs up to load test spear wire, the steel itself that the spears are made from. Obviously, those of you who know our brand know we do not use stainless steel. I'd love to use stainless steel. I'm yet to find a suitable stainless that's as good as, if not better than our current non-stainless spear wire. Today, I'm gonna to talk about different types of stainless. Those of you in the know will be aware there's different grades of stainless from uh, soft 316, very good anti-corrosion, 304, then the heat treatable types, for instance, uh, kitchen knives, dive knives are made from a very high quality stainless. Can't be used for a spear, too brittle, they'll snap. So you have to use a spring steel wire that is stiff, but won't snap when it's bent. I've never found a piece of stainless that's greater than about 15 to 1600 MPA. The wire we use, the non-stainless wire, is 2,100 MPA. So that's a massive improvement. What I'm gonna try and demonstrate today is just how much force is needed to bend the steel. We've set up a jig. We're gonna be pulling directly on the center. It'll center itself. There's just elastic bands holding in position on rollers to allow me to haul on it. Those dimensions will be the same for each test. At the moment, I've got a piece of 8 mil non-stainless in position. I've already hauled on it and I can pull 110 kilos. I'm going to take it up to 120 and go up in 10 kilo increments before we swap it out for a high quality stainless. This came out of a good quality pole spear and it's a high grade stainless. One of the ways of testing stainless for structural strength is with a magnet. If the steel is magnetic, generally that indicates how high a hardness it is. The softer the steel, the less magnetic it is. Give you an example, this is our drop bob. This is 304, it's just magnetic. 304 is better structurally marginally than 316. 316 will be better corrosion resistance, but zero magnetism. So if a shaft comes in and it's zero magnetic, or he has a plain piece, absolutely nothing. Go to another piece, absolutely nothing. That's a seven mole, that's a stringer pin what we use. Here is a spear, six point five millimeter magnetic the more magnetism the higher the tensile strength so that's one way to tell whether your spear steel is good quality or not i haven't done any of the stainless so i only have a few small pieces here so i don't want to destruct them yet but obviously i've got plenty of our standard steel so i had this up to 110 kilos i'm going to take it up to 120 and then check for straightness so he has the piece in position. As you can see, when I rotate it, it is already perfectly straight. Let's give it some load. Make sure everything is centered. We're up to 55. Let's take it up. There is 120. As you can see, fairly well flexed. I'm gonna back it off a little. Loads off. Still perfectly straight. No change. Let's take it to 130. Went a bit overboard there. There's 140. You can see there's a fairly big flex in that. Let's back it off. Still perfectly straight. Try that again. Let's go to 150. I mean, that's like two people standing on it at that point. 
big flex. Let's see if it takes a set. Still nothing in my opinion, nothing noticeable. I think once it gets to that point that it does flex, that'll be very noticeable. I haven't actually bent one yet, so I'm not quite sure where the pressure will be. Get some tension on it, centralize it. So we're always pulling more or less in the same place. That was 150. Let's take it up to 160. The Dyneema should be okay at that rate. Oh, wasn't watching. Over 170. Back it off. Still nothing. That's at 170. Wow. Even I'm impressed. Okay, let's take it up to 180. Just over. Nice deformation. Back her off. I'm feeling a slight variation. You can't see it, but one way or other, Seems to have a slight bend, definitely a slight bend. So that deformed at 180. Actually can't see much of a deformation. Might have just been the way it was sitting on the roller. Get the magnet out the way. That piece is still rolling perfectly. Wow. Let's take it up to 190. Now this is still the same piece. Believe me, I'm not trying to justify using spring steel wire. I'd love to use stainless. If anybody could find me a stainless that's as good as, I'd love to be making stainless steel spears. Now we're gonna take this one up to 190, make sure everything is still in the same position. Still looking good. Big bend, let's see how it goes. Backing it off. <laughs> Not seeing anything. 200. There we go, spot on 200. Big flex. I've seen spears and fish slow-mo video that are bent like that and would be You'd be convinced that spear is wrecked. Definitely feels a bit bent. Let's check it again on the bench here. I'd say there's a very slight deformation there. You see it rolls and stops. So 190 to 200 is definitely a point where it starts to deform. Point of interest. We're just gonna run plain stainless next. This is 316. Just to give you an idea how far it can go. Eight mil, 316, just to be sure. We've got it at 11. I'm gonna take it up till I see it flex and then back it off. There's just over 100. Let me back that off. Oh, clearly a bend. So that didn't even get to 100. So that is just plain 316. Very nice steel, no good for spears. Okay, let's just confirm this is 8 mil. Let's see how this does. All in position, same as what our previous ones was. Let's take it up to 100. Here we go. Little flex, let's see when we release it. 
That seems fine. I'm going to take it up to 120. Oh, went a bit overboard there. Trying to watch the steel and the gauge at the same time. Well, there's 140. Let's see how that does. Back it off. Feels a bit strange. Let me roll it. No. It's definitely got a bow. That was 140. Let's push it up to 150. There we're at 150, backing it off. Clearly deformed. That's about the same amount as we saw on the spring steel wire at 200. So that was 150 before it gets a clear deformation. Yeah, you can see it. Now I've got a whole bunch more here I can test. I'm going to be doing these tests. I'm not gonna bore you with it. I'll let you know how the results go. Um, believe me, I'm not knocking stainless. I actually would love to use stainless. If I can get stainless to the equivalent of our spring steel wire, it will be, I'd love to do that. I really, really would. So let's load some more. What I'm gonna do now, if you guys want to follow on, I'm gonna try 6.5 and I'll compare it with our 6.3, and let's see where we get to. This was an actual spear. I have checked it for straightness. It was perfectly straight. Being 6.5, it should fail a lot sooner. I'll keep it orientated the same way. I think 70 will be good. Got some deformation. Obviously being that much thinner, there's that much less resistance to bend. Still feels okay. Let's take it up to 80. I think she's just starting. Yeah, you see on the end here. See how that wobbles as I rotate? So that did 80. Now we don't make 6.5, we only have 6.3, 6.6. So I'm gonna compare it to our 6.3. So there we have 6.3, spear pulled off the shelf. Let's load that up. There's this barb hole, all in position. Okay, I'm gonna take this one up to 70. And now I'm gonna back it off. At 70, still fine. Now I'll take it up to 80, which was the same as what we pulled on the stainless. Now remember, this is six point, oh, they have gone over already, not watching. This is 6.3, so Dimensionally, is actually quite a lot thinner than that of the 6.5. There's 90. Back it off. There you go. Still way better at 90 with the 6.3 compared to the 6.5 stainless. I'm going to take it up to 100, see what happens. Here we are, just over 100. Massive deformation. Back it off. As you can see, rotating, still perfectly straight. Now, that's a big improvement. That's already 30% better than stainless in a bigger diameter. So there you have it. At least 30% better without deformation, this 6.3 compared to the stainless 6.5. We're gonna go now to 110. Ah, gone over a bit. Let's take it to 120.
That's a serious deformation. Let's back it off. That's impressive. Believe me, that's very impressive. Look at that. Still perfectly straight. No wobble at the bottom. And that's 120. Wow. Even I'm impressed. Back in position. If it was flexed, it would go to the side which was already stressed. So I'm not, it'll just self rotate. Let's load it to 130. 130. Can't seem to break it. <laughs> 130 it is. Next, 140. 140 will be double that of what the stainless was. All good. 140. Sure. That looks so seriously bent. <laughs> Now that is impressive. I think it's just starting. No, not. Let's take it out. Give it a roll test. I think it's ever so slightly. Just, just starting. Now that's in better condition at 140. 6.3 is in better condition at 140 than what the 6.5 stainless was at 70. So this is exactly what I've been saying, even though I've never tested it myself. The tensile strength is directly proportionate to the, I think they call it the yield, when it starts to de deform. Again, I can turn that into a pretzel. It will not snap. Never gonna do that, but uh, wow, that was impressive. It just shows you the quality of this type of spring steel wire. Obviously it's got a corrosion problem, but in terms of durability, stiffness, um, it's amazing. What we found over the years with those that do use stainless is because they're not cheap. When they do get bent, the guys try and hand straighten them. They generally don't get it that straight. Now you start missing fish. So that expensive shaft has now become a liability. You're losing fish. Whereas these, I tell the guys to treat them much like you would a fishing hook. If you do a lot of fishing, you'll notice most fishing hooks are made with high tensile spring steel wire, not stainless. Stainless is not as good as high spring steel wire, especially this high grade. There you have it. Stand by for the next.